their signatures along with their candidates to the peace accord. And you respectfully endorse also the last stages of the National Peace Accord. Relating to campaigns by political parties and the expected and the expected conducts by strategic actors in the process, including sorry, including the obligations of INEC, the media, the police and other security agencies under these sections. The police are mandated for the following for the following job. One, provide adequate security for processing and political rallies and campaigns. Two, resolve conflicts of time and benefit between parties in a consultative manner. And three, not to prevent any registered political party from holding rallies, procession, or meetings. The Act also prohibits political parties and their agents from violative conduct, such as one, political campaigns or slogans must not contain abusive language or use of languages that are disrespectful to religious, ethnic, or tribal beliefs. Two, abusive, slanderous, extreme, violent insinuations or inferences likely to provoke violence must not be used in political campaigns. Places designated for religious worship, the police station and other public offices must not be used for political campaigns, rallies, and processions, nor to promote, propagate, or attack political parties or their candidates or their programs and ideologies. The use of fear and intimidation, such as use of masquerades, physical force or coercion in any form including the retention and the use of private security organizations, groups of individuals or purpose of providing security at processions is prohibited. In this regard, I wish to call on the National Broadcasting Commission to note these provisions and ensure that the activities of the media practitioners are regulated accordingly. Against these highlights, Section 117 to 132 of the Act specifically identifies various electoral offenses, including forgery of electoral documents, disorderly conduct, propagating of falsehood, unlawful possession of firearms and offensive items, impersonation of voters' threat, bribery and inducement of electorates, among others. In relation to electoral officials, the Act identifies the reduction of duty by electoral officials and act of omission to do any act by electoral officials in breach of official duty. All these offenses which taught attract judicial punishment or fines or items of imprisonment or on conviction constitute major threats to our electoral processes. Democratic advancement and the national security. As we sign the peace accord, it is incumbent on all the political parties and all other strategic stakeholders that I have mentioned earlier in the electoral process to be committed to sensitizing their members and officials to be conscious of these provisions and resolve to avoid freely and patriotically contravening them in the interest of our democracy and national security. I must at this juncture commend INEC for optimally leveraging or cutting edge information and communication technology tools and introducing innovative actions that have proven to be ineffective, sorry, that have proven to be effective in mitigating electoral offenses of multiple voting, for instance, multiple voting or result altercation while on transit to collection centers and effects of ballot box snatching. These are offenses that can no longer be very, very viable because of the innovations of INA. While these initiatives have deepened our democracy, it is worrisome that political actors are unrelenting in exploring new acts directed at circumventing the electoral process. One of such is the ignoble and unlawful acts of vote buying and attempted cyber attacks on INEX cybers.